So I'm not just making declaration. I'm telling you what I'm hearing. I was here, I was typing. In fact, I was still typing when I had to come out. Those that knows this, or those that actually are the receiver of this, you know yourself when I say this. The Lord said, why they are trying to take your joy, I will multiply the joy. Amen! I don't know you, but you know yourself. He said, they are trying to take it, but I, the Lord, have, I have multiplied your joy. Amen! So if you believe, if it's for you, it's not for everybody. Those who want it will receive it. Number two, the Lord said, someone here, as long as you remain in my presence, I will cover your shame. Amen. Can I say that one more time? This one is an instruction. As long as, stop here, the Lord, as long as you remain in my presence that's what he said the only criteria for your shame to be covered is that you must remain as long as you remain in my presence i the lord is god saying now i will cover your shame Amen. number three the lord said someone here he said i will not only give you an apartment i will give you a home amen yeah, you are praying for an apartment. He says it's not an apartment. I'm giving you a home where you, your families will stay. It's a home I'm giving to you. Amen. If you believe that, lift your hands to heaven and rejoice in the Holy Ghost. Let's go. Glory. One more time, glory and rejoice in the Holy Ghost. Why they are saying that? In the first service, I, I had the Lord also said, someone here, what you actually ask God this morning, I don't know you, but you ask God for something. I had the Lord say, I should tell you that he has answered that what you have asked for. Amen! And the Lord said, someone here, when they thought it is over, I, the Lord, will begin again. Amen! And again. Amen. And again. Amen. And again. Amen. And again, Amen. if you believe that, shout the Lord, the Lord, hallelujah. hallelujah. And the final prophecy the Lord said, I should tell someone here, God Himself, He said, I have spoken to Him. I don't know the Him, I don't know the Him. He said, I've spoken to Him to help you, and He's coming to help you. Amen. Believe that, rejoice one more time in the Holy Ghost. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Clap your hands for Jesus. Amen. Let's be seated. While you are sitting, look at someone by your side. It's a prophetic service. So look at someone by your side. Make sure if there's no someone by your side, you are talking to, you don't know what I want to say now. Make sure you are looking at someone by your side. Said, say to that person now, smile first, smile. Smile, smile, smile first. Say, I know that you are going through a lot. But I have a mandate to announce to you that you send me your account detail. <laughs> what do you want? What, what mandate are you looking for? You want to pray for the person? Tell the person, send me your account. And I will credit it. <laughs> Clap your hands for Jesus. Amen. Very powerful topic. This morning, we want to celebrate um, a man of God, Pastor Toby, Pastor Kunle, for the first service message. Very powerful. We want to also celebrate the presence of Pastor Godwin here. Let's celebrate the man of God. Thank you. God bless you. Let's move. We have a lot to do. And this, this service is supposed to end with a prophetic illustration. I pray that um, I will have the time to do that illustration, which will um, bring the teaching to a climax. Prophetic direction. As long as you're on earth, whether you're a believer or not believer, we all need direction in life. Direction for many things. Many of you came to church with questions in your heart. Many are asking questions of who should I marry. 80% of people are asking young ladies, young men, they are asking they need direction for marriage. There are people who need direction to either relocate or to stay. Only a fool will take a decision without seeking direction. 
Only a fool will go on a journey where he knows that at the end of the day, that journey will end up in chaos or chaotic. We, the world we have is too, the time is too short for you to gamble with it. You can imagine you want to take a major decision and you are playing mini, mini, mini more. Father has a donkey. Donkey has. You can imagine, you can imagine a person is taking a destiny decision and he's playing, he's playing Ludo. He say, I will throw this thing up. If you fall on this side, it means I will marry you. If it doesn't fall on this side, you don't, you don't take destiny decisions with that kind of, that kind of, um, of, of, of a system. So we ask questions. Many ask the question of where should they walk? Some are even asking the question of who should be their father, who should be their spiritual. May we ask questions. Men ask the question of where should they live and how should they live. So there are questions in the heart of average everybody, whether believer or you are not believer. We are all seeking for direction. It is the lack of direction that leads people into one activity or the other. But the truth is, God is a communicator, He's always talking. God was the first prophet in scripture. That is why in Genesis chapter 1, in verse 3, the Bible said the earth was without form and void, darkness upon the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light. Now in Genesis chapter 1 down to chapter, chapter 20, Genesis chapter 1, from verse 1 to verse 17, God created four kinds of light. Each of those light means different things. The light in Genesis chapter 3 is different. The light he created in Genesis chapter 1 in verse 12 is different. The light he created in Genesis chapter 1 in verse 14 is different. So Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, Genesis chapter 1 verse 12, Genesis chapter 1 verse 14, Genesis chapter 1 verse 15 and 16. God created different light. All those light has one thing or the other. In verse 16 he created two great light. Yet he created light here. Then he created another light. In 14, he created another light. So why is God recreating light? Reason is that each of those lights are symbolic to the ordinances of God. And that is why there is nothing a man will do on earth. The first thing God sent to you is light. Why? Because God himself is light. When God created the earth, the Bible says, earth was born from the darkness upon God said, let there be light. He said that light and he made that light day. He made darkness light. Now he made the greater light day and the lesser light night. And he went further in Genesis chapter 1 in verse 14. The Bible says God created light for signs, for seasons, for day and night. It means that when you are in a season of your life, you want to end that season and enter into another season. What you cry for is not deliverance. What you cry for is light. Because the light was created for signs and God said let there be light in the firmament of heaven to divide day and night. You see the scripture that says weeping may endure for a night. Joy cometh in the morning. You see that between the joy meeting at, weeping at night and joy that cometh, the difference between the night and the day is light, right? How do you know this is a night? Absence of light. How do you know this is a day? Presence of light. So the Bible says, we may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. The joy that cometh in the morning is talking about the disappearance of darkness and the appearance of light. Meaning that your night can continue if light does not come. Am I speaking to someone? So what made light night to go? For some of you, you may be in your night till grave and there's nothing God will do. You may be your night still great. So it's not a confession. It's a reality. We may endure for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. My joy is coming. Bro, your joy may not come. If you don't understand what makes night to go. And light night, morning to come. When the Bible says my joy cometh in the morning. It's telling you that something left the night. And something came in the morning. It is called light. So without light, you may stay in your weeping forever. Many of you are crying and you think God hates you. He didn't hate you. He's a loving father. What he's looking for in you is have an understanding of the technology of the spirit. So he went forward and said, this light, night, in verse, return to Genesis chapter 1, in verse 14 when he was talking about night, he said the light is created for seasons. It's created for sign. It's created for day. 
and is created for night. How powerful light is. And in him was life. Life was the light of men. The light shined in darkness. Darkness comprehended. Look at the night was created for signs and for seasons. For there for night. Meaning that when you want to shift in seasons, seasons of frustration to seasons of celebration, it's not shouting, it's light you pursue. Seasons of pain to seasons of manifestation. It's not just going up and down harassing anybody. It's light you pursue. So absence of light is a presence of every seasons of delay in your life. And light does many things. You can't have direction without light. When the Bible says in Genesis, in Psalm chapter 119, in verse 105, Psalm 119 verse 1, let's look at that scripture, very powerful. I was meditating on that scripture, and look at the light that God shed in my spirit. The Bible said, thy word is a lamp, look up everybody, to my feet, and a light, look up. Can you read that scripture? Let's go now. Thy word is a lamp, and a light, powerful scripture. What does this mean? To go on a direction, you need two things. You need the feet and you need the paths. Because the journey to direction in life is feet and paths. How? Direction is, prophetic direction is movement between here and there. Movement between your present and your future. Probably between where you are now and where you're supposed to be. So for some of you, the directions of God for your life is that you are going to have a hope and future. But you need a lamp. No, you need a feet and you need a path. Now, your feet is what works with your feet is lamp. Why, sir? Because the lamp symbolizes daily decisions. How many of you Olden days, you know, lamp. Very kind of lamp. You ever call it atupa, right? You know, atupa cannot see far. When I was in school in those days, we used to carry lamp. We would be walking in the pathway. What it shows is just to show you your immediate step. Are you getting me? So, okay, so that you see immediate step. I will not stumble. That is what the lamp does. It's for daily decisions. When you wake up, what should I eat? What should I go? Who should I make friends? Who should I relate to? What do I do? What do I wear? They are lamp. There are daily decisions. So you need a light. Then when it comes to path, path are not daily decisions. Path are in two forms. Number one, path can mean a long-term decision. Two, path can mean an everlasting decision. So you don't carry the revelation of a lamp to now use it to equate a decision that is eternal. Now you want to choose who to marry. It's not lamp you bring. It's a light that you need. Am I speaking to someone? So the path means it's a, a long-term journey. How I, how I see many people foolishly take a lamp for a journey of a path. And take a lamp for a journey of, no, take a light for a journey of a feet. And take a lamp for a journey of a path. Who is following me now? So the lamp, the light is the path. When you want to go path, what you need is light. When you want to go fit, what you need is lamp. Let that sink in your spirit. So what is the lamp? What is, you need all that for prophetic direction. But God had given us several gifts in the spirit. Spiritual gifts are for our profiting. First Corinthians chapter 12, starting from verse 1. Are you ready? Let me take you through a little of theology this morning. For some of you, I'll take you through the school of the spirit. Are you ready to go? Are you sure you are writing? The Bible begins to talk about spiritual gifts. You see, all the gifts of the spirit, the Bible says, is for our profiting, is for our edification. There are nine gifts of the spirit. Are you ready now? Nine gifts of the spirit. Let's do a little Bible study. Nine gifts of the spirit. Let's start with the first. Run through it. Let's be running through it because of time. The nine gifts of the spirit, they are divided into three. Number one is called revelational gift. Number two is called vocal gift. And the third one is called power gift. Write this down. You will need it later. Three of nine gifts of the spirit is divided into three. So be running it. Yes. Diverse of gift. Keep running, keep running. Number one is called revelational. Number two is called vocal. Number three is called power gifts. 
nine gifts of the spirit. So let's run through the gift now. Look at another is gift of healing. Yes. Vocal gift, revelational gift. Let's start with revelational gift. Is the gift of word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and discernment of spirits. That's called revelation. Anything that reveals things, reveal knowing things. That is what you need for prophetic direction. I'll just take you through the journey. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and discernment. You are not writing. Discernment of two. Two. When it comes to power gifts, you need faith, gift of faith, gift of healing, and the workings of miracle. That's the gift that you see power. True power. That's power. Faith, healing, and miracles. Then when it comes to the vocal gift, that's the gift that speaks. It's called interpretations of tongue diverse kind of tongue interpretations of, of tongue and um, the third one can be in between vocal gift and revelation gift called gift of prophecy because gift of prophecy both reveals and is oratory are you following me who is getting it now prophecy is this is hey, this way pastor the teacher yes i'm teaching you the way of the prophet you can understand these things revelation Prophecies, both revelational and um, revelational, revelatory, and at the same time is vocal. The four gifts I want to talk about now is now the revelation. This is where you seek prophetic direction. I want to show you how you can know the will of God for your life. I want to show you how you can pray. Pastor, who is the will of God for me? This is, I want to show you practically. So it's not me to be seeking prophet up and I want to show you. I want to know what is the will of God for I want to show you by teaching. After this decision, you will thank me later. Are you sure? So the prophetic direction is trapped in revelational gift. Gift of word of knowledge. Two, word of wisdom. Three, discernment of spirit. And then add gift of prophecy. Okay, four persons. Let me do quickly an illustration. Four persons, come, be fast. Four of you. Look up, everybody. You'll be blessed this morning. Now, time is running. I'm also, come up, come up, come up. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, you have to be fast. My time is running. I do have time. And I need to teach. Come. Okay? All right, come, come. All right, let's start. Word of knowledge. Word of, word of knowledge, word of wisdom. So let's do like this. Word of knowledge discernment of spirit, gift of prophecy, and word of wisdom. Write it like that in your book. So let me give you an example. Yinka, come. So let's say this is Yinka praying to God. Lord, I need direction. And he show me the way. Show me, Lord, who should I marry? Where should I walk? So God will use these four gifts to bring answers to you. How is come is word of knowledge. What is word of knowledge? Word of knowledge is a divine ability or divine enablement, divine gift of the spirit that helps you know. It helps you know. It's called knowledge. It's knowing. You know. You just know something. Right? It helps you know the source of a problem. So have you seen when people look at you and say, your problem is from your family. Have they told you a prophecy like that? That your, prof pro your problem is from your hometown. But when they told you that, did they tell you a solution? The fact they told you they were a problem for your hometown, does it bring a solution to you? No, sir. So what manifested there is called knowledge. Knowledge is he knows. So some of you, you meet people or here, we've, been told, you, we've told you that your problem is, is um, somebody somewhere is the one who did it okay. That is word of knowledge. It's knowing. Word of knowledge reveals the location or reveals the identity of the problem. That's what a lot of knowledge does. It reveals, sometimes it can reveal the past, reveal the present, reveal the future, but it doesn't bring solution. Then you move from word of knowledge and move to discernment of spirit. What does discernment of spirit does? Discernment of spirit is the one that reveals the spirit behind the problem. How? They can say, your problem is from your hometown, okay, and there is a strong, family strong man behind it. There is an ancient spirit behind it. Oh, there is one, there is one spirit behind it. He reveals the spirit. That is called discernment. He helps you review, we are looking at the context of prophetic. He helps you review the spirit behind the problem or sometimes he can review the cause of the problem. So he can say, the reason why you are not married 
is that your father covenanted everybody in your family. Have you had something like that before? The reason why nobody succeeded in your family is because they planted something, something somewhere. You've had something like that. It's reveal, they reveal the cause or a spirit behind the problem. But does it still bring solution? If you dwell at that, you are still not free. This is where we are. Hey, they prophesied to me, my brother, what kind of prophecy did they give you? The prophet said, the, 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 what is killing everybody in my family is that there is a deity. All right. So where did you stop? You only stop at the sermon of spirit. So you move to the third. The third is where the gift of prophecy comes. So what gift of prophecy does is that prophecy, the gift of prophecy reveals what is God saying concerning this matter. All right, your problems from village, good. They planted something there, good. So what is God saying? All right, God said he wants everybody in your family delivered. But the fact that that is what God is saying, does it bring the deliverance? No, sir. What is the mind of God concerning this matter? That is what prophecy comes to reveal. Prophecy comes to reveal the mind of God concerning a matter. So God is saying that uh, though they've been planted things, though there's a struggle in your family, though, but God is saying that he will deliver you. He will deliver you as he delivered. It's just a promise. So this is what the gift of prophecy comes. But then you come into the last gift. It's called the word of wisdom. So prophetic direction is trapped in word of wisdom. But you don't journey enough to get to word of wisdom. That's why we are stopped. I've been there for 40 years. Nobody's helping me. You didn't get to word of wisdom. What word of wisdom does is that the word of wisdom helps you to bring solution. Somebody shout solution. The word of wisdom reveals the supernatural solution to the problems. That is why Elisha, all through the scripture, 2 Kings chapter 2, 2 Kings chapter 3, 2 Kings chapter 4, Elisha was able to reveal solutions to problems. Hallelujah. Solution came. Amen. Elisha said, no matter how since he came to this town, and they said, this town is, um, is barren. Elisha, bring me cruise. And he went to the source. And he put salt. You see, if you carry salt, you say Nigerian problem. Things are not working. You now carry salt to Asurok. You will buy bags of salt. Nothing will happen. So because Elijah carries salt, you are carrying salt. The salt there is a symbol of preservation. We are only saying that we need leaders that can preserve us. Not leaders that will hit us raw. Preservation, that's what he's talking about. So a prophet can go and say, buy, buy one bag of salt. You, you now go and buy salt. You are applying all over your house. You will pull salt, pull salt, nothing will happen. You must understand that the scripture's interpretation is different from the current day interpretation. So Elisha told the woman who wanted to sell the wife of the widow, wanted to sell the son, the children. He said, what do you have in your house? He said, it's a pot of oil. He said, oh, bring it. Go and borrow vessels. Empty vessels. Shut your door. Pour. So you can imagine me now. I say, what do you have? He said, Pastor, I have one granite oil. And then I say, bring it. He won't borrow granite oil. I said, go, to your, go and borrow all the drum of all your neighbor in your house. Shut your door. Before you will pour the oil. Not oil. But what is the scripture saying? It's a, it's a symbol of Elisha saying that first, you must understand. You know, he says, shut the door. It means that there are some doors that are open in your life that will not allow some manifestation to come. Secondly, say that what you have, that there's something you have. While you're looking for help from outside, the help is actually within. That there's something you have inside of you that can help to bring solution to others. So everywhere you see Elisha manifest prophecies, he manifests word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discernment of spirit, and gift of prophecies, and word of wisdom. The word of wisdom is the one that brings solution to problems. The word of wisdom is the one that reveals the solution behind the situation. But fortunately, we have people who have manifested negative word of wisdom. Many of you who had received word of wisdom in a negative way. So there are some word of wisdom that are demonic. And I will tell you the seven ways you can check if a word of wisdom is from God or not from God. 
all right i think people can sit down then i'll come back to that again i'll show you how there are people who will tell you a prophecy and i hear this a lot a lot of people will say somebody's using your glory have you had something like that before they say, they're using your glory they're using your glory to be honest i i they only use the glory that you have you can imagine somebody says using my glory the question is the number one i don't even have a glory the reason is that the glory i have jesus is my glory so if you can use the glory of jesus if you can use god will use the glory of jesus because christ in me is the hope of glory so where's the glory you want to use when jesus christ i've given my glory to jesus but am i saying people don't use people's glory they do bro come if you meet somebody today who says let me use your glory i'll give you five million every month will you allow them five million every month and i'll be using your glory yes or no five million every month talk 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 he's shy the family you are smart you like money i'll use your glory or they will use not me somebody wants to use your glory i'll give you five million every month because you even have the dollars you have the money you have the glory you are not using it somebody that wants to use it. <laughs> hey, is this, is that what? Stand possible, sir. She, she will not, if you know you release it wave your hand look at sharp people very smart they will use your glory and give five million every month the question is the the glory itself are you using it <laughs> no are you using it is it the, you guys a business person praise the lord no no don't get me wrong what i'm saying is that what i'm saying is that amen look up look up as believers our glory is christ the moment you give your life to jesus you submit your glory to jesus Christ is in charge of your glory. So if there are enemies around, all you need to do is to report to Christ and Christ fight your battle for you. There are people who, by this reason, they have become enemies. I know somebody who told somebody one day, your pastor is using your glory. They say, your pastor is using your glory. The person just smiled, laughed. He said, you don't know. Because even where I am today, it was the same pastor who helped me. You know, there are people that can give you a prophecy will turn your friend to become your enemy. Be careful of prophecy that turn out of men against themselves. A prophecy that will make you now the, the one who, who loves you genuinely. They give you a prophecy, you are now, you see the person, you are angry with the person. I know a professor, they give the person a word of knowledge. That because the professor is looking for food of the womb, she should go and buy goat and back goat in the middle of the market. A prophet, PhD holder. The woman went to buy goats and was dancing with goats and they said, what a foolish decision. And people can do terrible things when they are stranded in the cause because they need solution. Have you seen someone who needs solution? Terrible solution. They can do anything for anything. And you know, how do you test the prophecy? I'll give you my formula. I call it Gov. SSH. Gov SSH. Please write it. It's my formula for testing prophecies. Number one, Gov. Meaning that the, the prophecy must glorify Jesus. Any prophecy given to you that does not glorify Jesus, it is not from God. That's my first G. Gov. Glorify Jesus. So they told you, come in the, out in the middle of the night somewhere in the front of your house uh, outside. You should be bathing naked. It doesn't glorify Jesus. It doesn't glorify Jesus. And we love, we love hard things rather than the simplicity of the scripture. Our, you see, darkness that made us believe that if something is not complicated, it cannot be God. Must prophecy be complicated before you believe it's God? One person needed, a man of God wanted to see revelations. He came to another man of God. The man meets Cameroon Pepe. Mix with the oil, enjoy, mix everything. He gave this man of God. He said, when you get to a point on your eyes, you will see. The guy, point, his, his eyes went blind. You say, you say, if you see terrible things people are doing, go to the grave and go and sleep on the graveyard because you want to swim. People are doing terrible things. 
negative side of prophets, the word of knowledge. They are prescribing solution, but not in the scriptural way. Any prophecy that exploits you financially is not does not glorify Jesus. How can they tell you to go and borrow money, collect loan, collect loan? You collect loan, collect money, you are owing money, and you go and collect loan to sow seed, to give. You can't borrow loan. You can't borrow money to sow to God. If you want to give sacrifice, let it be what you have, not what you go and borrow. It's financial exploitation. If you are here and you are giving a prophet somewhere money, you, they're exploiting you. And that does not glorify Jesus. So, Gov, SSA, let me just run it then I'll teach it. Gov is what G is the more glorified Jesus. O means that the prophecy must not. Uh, I call it, um, it must not, uh, it must not take away the faith of others. There's others' faith. Any prophecy that they give to you is taking the faith of, how can a, a woman pack out of her house? You say, a prophet told her, your husband is wicked, he wants to kill you, he pack out of the house. A woman of God or something, pack out of the house, and you say, you are packing to your pastor's house. To so live there as what? Married woman. They are packing up. If you see terrible things they do in Bariga, they will pack out. You pack out of your house, pack everything. You are packing to a pastor or packing to somebody's house. Others, others' faith must not die by prophecy. G O L means your own. The prophecy must not. Make you lose your health. Lost of health. That is, I had somebody who had an ulcer. This person has ulcer problem. And the person went to meet the man of God. man of God says, you do seven days dry. So, I'm telling you, ulcer. The person says, I said, you can't do it all. I said, if you want to do be taking fruit and water, it can still help you. He said, no. The man of God said, because my problem is peculiar, I should not eat. I said, you, they should go and buy your coffee. Your family should prepare for your casket. Because if not die, you are going to die. Say, no. I believe in God. God is not foolish. Faith is not foolish. Faith is not foolishness. The prophecy must not be injured to your health. It must be injured to your health. You, you're doing something and you know your health is at stake. There are times even if your health does not permit it, you, there are some times who are fasting, we tell you if you have health problem, don't fast. Somebody fasted on the mountain, came on the mountain, one time was on the mountain, came and fast on the mountain, and the person collapsed there. They said the person was doing 21 days dry. He died though. It was his dead body they brought down. Did God send him to die? So when that one appeared before God, is it suicide that he will be charged for or what? Because when you appear before the great God, say you kill yourself. I didn't kill you. You kill yourself. Who told you to do 21 days dry? So it must not be due to your health. S of the prophecy means it must be simple. Prophecy must not be complicated. And the simplicity of prophecy, word of wisdom, is a problem to many. Do you know one time, I think it was my wife, we were somewhere, and this lady, this guy selling um, oil, uh, what do you call it? Soap, oil soap. You know, I think she had one growth, one problem somewhere that she has been having the pain at the back somewhere. And then she has been feeling it, told me, I have this pain. So we were packed one day and we saw this boy pass with the selling oil. Soap, liquid soap. We stopped the boy. Ah, why are you not in school? Others are in school. The boy said, there's no money anywhere. Then she, the Lord just means that to her, said, buy the soap. She wanted to buy one. Then the boy said again, buy everything. And then she bought all the soap in the boy's hand. And the boy was so happy. Oh, God bless you, ma. You don't know what you have done for me today. God bless you. The boy was crying. And the boy went, we don't know him. Till now, we don't know him. I think we even went to go and call the parent. Then we have left. By the next day, the growth disappeared. It disappeared. Just like that. And then, and I said, I, that boy was an angel. He was not a soap seller. He was an angel that was disguised in selling soap. You must understand. Prophecies are simple. One time we had an evangelism here and the Lord said, everybody should go on evangelism. And I came out and I went on evangelism. I've been believing God for one 
breakthrough somewhere, have prayed, 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 fasted, nothing worked. I remember that day, it was one of those streets, and I was by the gutter, sitting down, talking with, I see that picture, talking with this guy on my phone. As I was talking to the guy, and I was smiling, I prayed with him, and as I returned back to my house, the breakthrough I was looking for, for years, I got it that same day. Simplicity of prophecy. You love too many complicated things. If I tell you right now that the instruction God said is that everybody should jump up three times. I want to say, Pastor, make soap for us. Do soap. Do soap. You like something must mean. Are you an abalis? If your mind is always mix, 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 must they be mixing things before you believe God? When prophets are not, when they're too complicated, they are too, 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 too difficult, then you, you, you believe it. But they are simple, you don't believe it. So it must be simple. It's called the simplicity of the gospel. I've given money sometimes. Sometimes God tells me things to do. I can be John God says, bless somebody. It's a prophetic direction. The moment I do it, I receive instant reward immediately. Some of you, you have aborted your prophetic season, aborted the blessings of God coming upon your life because you ignore the voice. And this is where I'm going to be dwelling for a few minutes. How do we navigate through prophetic seasons? First, you must recognize the, imp- the place of a voice of God. You must understand how to hear voice and obey voice. Because if you don't understand the voice, you will not know the direction to take. So look up, everybody. Where is the... Alright. Look up, I want to show you something. Uh, success, stand up. Yes, so just, just where you are. Everybody. Every believer is like this. This is who we are. Right? We are spiritually... We walk with God by faith, not by sight. We don't walk with God with our eyes. But I'm not waiting till they see. Ah, I don't see blessing. No, sir. God doesn't see us with eyes. He sees us with our hearts. He sees us with what? His heart. God used to work with us. So look at her. This is just an example of every believer. So, give me a package. Give me a package. Success. I have your blessing in my hand. Your marriage, everything is in my hand. Come out and get it. Success. Just watch. So at first, stop. She had, there is a package. Come out and get it. She does not know where the package is. She does not know where the blessing is. She doesn't even know where the direction is. She's just going anywhere. That is why in life, how you know God is talking to you is that he is specific. God is specific with you. God will not just tell you, go to Oshobo. And then you just get to Shebo and then he will tell you. He will give you some specific instructions. That is first. So, where she is now, I want to guide her to where I am so that she can get my package. The same way God wants to guide you to where he is, to where your glory will manifest. He wants to guide you. He wants to, you are the one that thinks your blessing is in the U.S. Your blessing can be in Kenya. You think your helper is in Canada. Truly, your helper can be in Cameroon. You are smiling. It's a thought of a heart. All you need to do is first follow the direction of the voice. So, success. On the journey of life, there are obstructions. There are battles. There are mountains that are confronting us. If you go by yourself, your eyes are blind. You can't see the way. So you need to rely on the voice. Success. Take a step to your right. To your left. All right. No, to your right now. One step to the right. Another right. 
right all right stop another step to the one step to the left stop take a step forward keep moving forward forward stop this is how we navigate through life following voices this is how we navigate from one realm to another following directions of God this is how we get to a place called favor this is how we get to a place called opportunity now in the course of God's voice speaking another voice will speak success hold on where you are success go back success stay I said go success back. stay I mean now stay before I come today stay go back success stay go look at what is happening there's a confusion there's another voice different from the voice she used to hear the voice of God was the one who told her to move forward another voice is telling her to go back you know if she cannot discern the voice she may likely go back now where she is now she's thinking should I go back should I go forward should I go back I? if that voice continues she may likely return back and she will lose her blessing she may lose her blessing first and foremost the first mistake she did is that she's entertaining the voice she's giving the voice the thoughts because the voice you don't give a thought you will not give that voice an opportunity in your life so some of you you have a voice telling you to do something against God and then you are thinking about it should I should I not should I have you verified you know when God spoke to you before you have followed that voice you have followed the leading how come you are entertaining another voice that is not the voice of God okay let her follow that voice and hear the voice tell her to go back and see if she's moving closer to her destiny or going back all right put Put another here. Put another here. All right. In the midst of battles, in the midst of trials, she's a deliverance is on the promise of the voice. We move by voices. Where we are today, it was a voice that led us there. I married my wife because of a voice I had. Every movement, every time there's a shift in your life, every time there's a, a season in your life, it was a voice. And listen, every time you ended up in trouble, it was another voice. Every time you broke a desert relationship, you listened to a voice, even though you didn't know. You listened to a voice and you responded to that voice and you ended up in the place you're not supposed to find yourself. Look at her now. Speak. Go. So this voice is saying, speak, yeah, speak now, let's go. Go. Wait. Back. Keep speaking. Go. Back. Wait. Just take it. After a while, backward. the voice of God is quiet. The go voice back home. Oh yeah. Go back. As she's going back, can you see her meeting go all kinds of obstacles? Back. She's meeting all kinds of obstacles. Go. She's even confused because at this time, this voice is prevailing. Go. And as long as you are listening go. to the voice that is not of God, you will meet obstacles in your life. Could it be the obstacle you are meeting now is as a result of a negative voice countering the voice of God? Success, wait. Just go back. There is no way forward. Wait now. There is no way forward. Do wait. I've told you my mind. Wait. Go back. Wait. Go. Wait. Go. Success. Recognize the voice of your maker. Wait. Go back. Wait. Wait. I said go back. Wait. It is a serious matter. Go wait. Back. I mean. Success. Now. now take a step forward. Go back. One step to the left. Another step back to the right. Now take it forward. Take step forward. 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 No, stop. Take a step to the right. One step to the right. Forward. Keep coming forward. Keep coming forward. Keep coming forward. Step to the left. The left. 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 Left, 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 come forward. Come forward, come forward to the right. 
forward. Move forward. To the left. Now, straight forward. Forward. Yes, forward. Keep moving. One step forward. One step. One step forward. Stop. Stop. Lift up your right leg and climb the hill. Just one. Right? Climb. Another step up. Up. Climb. This is how we navigate life. It's not by muscle. It's not by who you know. It's not by power. The Bible said not by might. Not by power. But by my spirit. See it, the Lord. Any man you see manifesting God. It was a voice that they followed. Then you see God leading you. Going to crypto. And you enter there in less than one month. Two months. Three months. You become a billionaire. This is how we become great. Sometimes God leads you and tells you, this is the man you will marry. Everybody's not seeing destiny in him, but you saw destiny and you stay there. This is the person, this is where you should worship. It doesn't look like it. Oh my God, my daughter Benita, I will never forget her. When they started insulting her, oh, this is the church, blah, 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 all kinds of things. She said, this is my pastor, this is my pastor, this is my church. She stayed. Look at where she is in Europe, enjoying God. See how grace, many of our friends who left who left then when we were nothing, they were they are nowhere to be found. This is how we climb a step forward, up, lift up your leg, up, 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 come forward, stop, take a turn, take a turn right, right, yes, now forward, forward, lift up your leg, up, up, very high, high, yes, high, climb. Come forward, 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 forward. Stop. Take a turn forward. Take a turn to the right. Now. Did you know how you got here? No, sir. Men that became great don't know how they got there. They only follow the leading. A prophetic direction. Place for men. 
ben kosekepa e ko sha po sepa e ko se only if you listen e sa pam pepe pe sham pele ko e ka pam pepe pe ko she if i speak you listen e ko fela to e ko pam sekepa e ko e ke pe ke pe pe ke be sha e ko pe 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 when you listen i will direct you e ka pam so pa Rabam bebe mbele prevail as listen. Eh, rabe shope ya. Listen to the voice of your Creator. Ke poshepe mpa. E tapa rebe mbele kosha. Listen to the voice of your Savior. Ke mposha kose and the peace of the Lord Jesus. Your labor must be to know the voice that is talking. That is your labor. Could it be the pain in your life now is as a result of a voice that you ignored? Your next level, listen, you are one step away from your next level breakthrough. It's just a voice. You are one voice away from your destiny helper. You are one voice away from your marriage. You are one voice away from your breakthrough. You are one voice away from your favor. You are one voice away from your international career. You are just one voice away from your favor. It's just for you to hear a voice and take a move. She wouldn't have landed here by power. When she was able to call, she was hearing the voice and following this voice. She didn't know she was coming on the altar. She didn't know. There are times that the Lord is leading you. And as he's leading you, you will know, you don't know where he's leading you to, but he's leading you. But listen, I know one thing. When God is leading men, he does not lead them into rebellion. God does not la- ra- raise rebellion people. God will not raise men who will live in ingratitude. God will not raise men who will live a life, they will use their own faith to destroy others. When it's lifting men, it will lift men that will lift others. This is how God raised men in this kingdom. At this point, she can get their word. She can get the pursuit. What others are laboring for, she get it with ease. What others are labored for years, she got it on the, because for her to get this thing, she must be at the place that God wants her to be. As long as she's here, life and blessings and favor will come upon her. I want you to rise up on your feet. Father, every strange voices manipulating my decision, every strange voices fighting my prophecy, every voice, Lord, the only voice I want to hear must be your voice. The only decision I must make must be your decision. Where there are voices fighting me, where there are voices counteracting, countering the voice of my decisions, I silence voices. Let the voice of God be the dominant voice. Are you ready to?